was a guy named uh, Ted Levitt at the Harvard Business School back in the 60s who wrote a paper on um, uh, knowing what business you're in. And he, for example, pointed out that the people that owned the railroads thought they were in the railroad business. They didn't understand they were in the transportation business. So they got stuck with railroads while along came an interstate highway system with trucks, along came airplanes and that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, the, I, what I'm trying to say is understand what you're trying to do, not what it's called, not the technology that you're using, the hardware or anything else. What do you do for people? Remember, uh, what Job said and what I said back then was you want to listen to your customers, but not too much. It's the old adage, always listen to your customers, but if you think about it, that's not really good advice because your customers aren't good at describing what they do. They're good at doing it. And they're very different skills. And I remember when I worked at Solomon Brothers, there was, and I got pushed out of running the equity business and went to run the back office and all their computer systems. And people said everybody took the information and they moved it to their left side. And it didn't make a lot of sense to me. So I had somebody up in the balcony looking down at the trading room and every time they got a piece of information, paper, whatever it was, did they move it to the left or the right? And 50-50 went in both directions. The people that had described what people were doing weren't good at that. And so my advice to you is ask people what they're doing, look at them, but don't let them design your product. That's not what they're good at. And in our case, and in Steve Jobs' case, I think that's exactly what happened. Uh, Steve went and tried to look at what the people really want, and he didn't get tied up with what was the hardware or what conventional wisdom was or how things had been done elsewhere. Uh, he took uh, a, an idea and he kept coming up with another one and another one and another one. Not all of his things work, incidentally. We write the history of Steve Jobs and everybody thinks that everything he touched turned to gold. It did not, but what he never liked to happen was getting disappointed when it did not work. Um, you have the power to make New York City the global capital of innovation and entrepreneurship. And in many ways, we already are. We are the world's capital for media, advertising, fashion, finance, so many other industries. We have double the number of fashion houses in Paris. This is where it takes place. We're the college town of America. Somebody said, oh, no, no, the college town is Boston. I love Boston. I grew up there. But it turns out we have more undergraduate and graduate students in our universities here than Boston has people. <laughs> a tech capital. This is the area that is going to define the city in the 21st century's economy. And I want us to grow faster and bigger, so when people talk about tech startups, they talk about Silicon Valley and New York City before anywhere else, and our administration is looking every possible way to support entrepreneurs and innovation. And I just wanted to mention a few because we certainly can't sit here and let Silicon Valley be bigger than us in anything.